everybody. Thanks for coming back to the CEO for Life Experience. And we are now in our episodes pushing towards 100. And I'm really excited about consistency with our guests, people that are exuding the CEO for Life Experience. And I have Miss Kimberly Kennedy with us today. Hey, Kimberly. Hi, how are you doing? Doing great. Well, listen, everyone that's uh, either watching or listening. So I, again, I find some of the best guests by cyber stalking them through LinkedIn. And I came across <laughs> this post that uh, Kennedy had, Miss Kimberly Kennedy had, I'm sorry, my my youngest daughter's name is Kennedy. So I'm sorry. About that. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. So uh, Kimberly made this post and she said, why did I choose the career path I did? There are three reasons. William, Clara, and Ruby. And so that kind of struck me. And then obviously I started going down the rabbit hole, Kimberly, and you have this great CEO for life experience path, and I'd love to dive into it. So maybe we can get to know you a little bit. So share a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay. Well, um, I am a, I'm half Texan, half Canadian. I actually grew up in Calgary, Alberta, and then move so south of the south to north of the north um i reside in dallas texas now i, I consider myself like a, like a texas girl now true and true but um i have three kiddos a five-year-old an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old uh and i'm a my career path started in advertising and marketing and then moved to kind of a performing arts group for kids which i loved I was a young mom at the time starting a small business. That was my first experience uh, as a small business owner. And I just, I loved it. I did that for a little bit. And then we moved to the Dallas area and I just really wanted to support my husband. He also um, is a business owner um, in the Dallas area and put some stuff on the back burner, loved all my kids for a couple of years. And then it was time for me to try something new. And so now I'm in wine sales which is a whole new path and a whole new passion for me that has been so cool. I've loved all the wine education. I'm a total wine geek now. I, I never would have thought that sales would be my path, but I focus on small family vineyards that tell a beautiful story about wine, like why, why they do what they do. And uh, I also have a little bit of a comedic flair to everything I do uh, while I was staying at home. I just started writing comedy content to like, just for myself mainly and for my family and friends to be like, okay, Kim, what, what are you doing over there today? And uh, it's been really an interesting journey because as soon as I meld those together uh, and kind of put some humor marketing on my wine sales, just my true self kind of came to the surface and things have moved in such a fun, authentic direction. It's been a absolute blast. And uh, just to, to sell wine, tell the story, but also be myself uh, has been great. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, just building my wine business and having a lot of fun doing some really random humor uh, while I do it. <laughs> you know, this is perfect <laughs> because this lines up so much with what the book talks about CEO for life. And the first thing we really talk about is this whole level of self-awareness, right? And, yeah. you know, self-awareness can come to us early in age, different points in our life. You know, you have this this great trajectory that has like these three legs to the stool and you'd be able to bring them together. How do you begin to, if anyone that's listening to this, that, you know, maybe a stay at home parent, dad or mom, whatever, or, you know, moms, whatever. Um, how do you begin to, to, to look at, okay, maybe I can do this for business. How do you begin to bring out those things of who you are and turning it into a business and, you know, and still manage the rest? Well, it, for me, I think my biggest advice for either stay-at-home parents or somebody who's making a transition in the career, I have looked back, every single thing matters. Everything that I've done career-wise or it, in the parenting realm, whether it's supporting my husband or doing something like comedy writing, for example, for me, right. I never thought that there would ever be like, what's the value in that with a full-time position, or if I wanted to be an entrepreneur, like, what does that look like? And I think my biggest advice would be everything matters. You're going to look back and you're going to weave through like what your authentic self is in the business that, that you pursue. And it's going to make sense. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing is I always thought like my comedy writing was more just for fun. Uh, 
Um, maybe my performing background was just kind of something to do as a hobby, but it's actually come full circle and helped me in entre entrepreneurship and, uh, you know, pursuing a small business. So, and really just try and find that work-life balance that works for you. For me, it's wine sales and I have more flexibility. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think that would be my biggest advice is just to know that it's all going to make sense at some point. All of this stuff matters and it all will come together. So. Yeah. I, I love, I love what you said. It all matters, right? I mean, we're all, we're all a mixture of everything that is weaved together in our life. And I love how, how you talk about that. Um, and you, people that are listening, because you went through this process and I just going to back this up a little bit. You went through the process of taking an inventory of the things that you were really good at, right? Those strengths that you had, and you just happened to be able to put those together into picking wine sales because it had the flexibility and those kind of things. So anyone that's listening or watching this, that's a great exercise. You know, Kimberly just taught us again is take a moment and take inventory of what you're damn good at and what you like, right? Yeah. And the, and the, and the other thing is don't be afraid to like, really be yourself. Honestly, in the beginning of my sales uh, journey, I kept it kind of, I don't know. I just felt like there wasn't a space in the wine world for somebody that's goofy and silly like me. And I've come to the conclusion that not only is there space at the table for somebody like me, people are like, yes. I mean, here, here, Robert, here's my, here's my fake feet. I just have them on my get desk. I mean, People are like, where have you been? You can sell wine. You know, it's yeah. just, it's just, yes, looking back and not only thinking that your strengths in one category could be a weakness in another, it's not. Like, I found that my business has grown when I thought, you know, you almost, I almost put it a little bit on the back burner. You know, I, I really dove into a, a storytelling class at a comedy house. I just thought it was going to be a hobby and I would never meld the two because I thought, oh, wine industry, it's going to be real buttoned up and, you know, right. Um, right. And, and that's not the case at all. First of all, the people that are the true uh, people in winemaking and that are in the industry, they are so laid back and hilarious and fun, but right. there's a bit of a stereotype out there and it's so not true. So as soon as I meld, like I had... I had comedic content I'd written three years ago and I've infused it in some of my, some of my <laughs> wine marketing and oh my gosh, it's working, you know? And it's, right. it's just, just to encourage people that, like I said earlier, it all matters. And to really, really do an inventory and a, something you think is a strength in another category absolutely can be, you know, a strength in your business too. Like, don't put that on the back burner include it all because that's people are going to buy because they know you're being your authentic self so okay so i got i got two points out of that i got to pick on so <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> here we go the first one is um you, you walked me through um the, the i guess what i took away from what you just said was often we take ourselves too seriously so what do you think Absolutely. about that so, so walk me through that if i'm in sales and trying to make money and those kind of things can i take myself too seriously and make it a detriment Oh, a hundred percent. I think that there is value. So I think what people get wrong about um, not taking yourself too seriously is that people might mistake that for that you don't have the wisdom and knowledge to be in the industry. And that's not true. Who wants to work with somebody that is just kind of a stiff and just not, where do you want to spend your time? It doesn't mean, and I had to convince myself of that as well, just because I like to have a good time and I will prank you when it's appropriate and we will have fun and, but we'll, our passion will be wine and we'll sit and, and make the best customer experience. Robert, I will tell you that my wine customers, my local wine customers, um, they, I, sometimes I'll deliver their wine orders because I'm close to our warehouse. So I go and pick up their wine order for them. And sure. if they have a zoo, if they have a ring door cam, I dance, I drop it off and I'm like, and then I'll text yeah. them and I'll say, wine's yeah. at your door, check your cam. Yeah. Half the time, because a lot of my customers are women, half the time their husbands check the door cam and they're like, oh, so good. Oh, the, oh, the wine lady's here again. 
and it just, and then they're like, oh, are you going to two-step next time? What are you going to do? The salsa? And, right. but this, it's the customer experience. And right. prior to that, I went through an inventory. I picked out, you know, the perfect match for them for the wine. I was an, you know, an expert in my field, but also have a little fun. So yeah. that's what I would encourage. If that's your personality, like, you know, you don't want to force sure. being silly and goofy, but if you are, and it, that's your heart and your soul, and that's just part of you, then do that. And it doesn't mean that you're not professional. And I think people get that mixed up. Yeah, I, I love that because it, it, it can be to the point where, you know, people are so worried about that fine line that they're not even willing to take the risk. And, you know, that can right. almost, I mean, it's a detriment, I mean, to, to bottle that up and so on. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. So I have this creative side in me. I have this fun side. Um, how do I go about fostering that creative side? You talked about taking some classes. You talked about maybe, you know, writing and those kind of things. What would you recommend? So, you know, I, say you're coaching me and, you know, okay. boy, Kimberly, you know, I, I, you know, I have this creative side. I love to have a good time. You know, I want to integrate it with my business. What, what should I do, Kimberly? Well, I think for me, I actually had to take the time and my personal, what I think is funny is kind of, um, I'm more of a random humor. You know, my, if I'm talking about what my favorite movies are comedically, I mean, they are dumb and dumber, bridesmaids, stuff that like, you take situational stuff. Yeah. Napoleon right. Dynamite. Yeah. My mom <laughs> thinks Napoleon Dynamite is the worst movie on the planet. I think it's genius. I do Tina too. the Llama, oh, throw yeah. in the casserole. That kind of oh, yeah. stuff. So what you want to do is you take what you think is funny. And for me, it's situational stuff. And I, I kind of flesh it out and write it out for myself because that's just kind of what I do to kind of what do I think is funny and how can I, can, how can I infuse that conversationally or in my content that I post on LinkedIn or whatever. So for example, I'll give you an example of an everyday thing that me as a person thinks funny and I thought it would connect with my customers and my audience it drives me crazy that the shampoo and the conditioner you never finish them at the same time right That's true <laughs> you never do and so I make this whole post and there was like 50 comments I I feel you I understand it's just funny like that's just funny oh. that why is that it's a conspiracy. What is happening? I mean, it's just that kind of stuff where everyday things that people want to know that about you yeah. and it, you know, and it can't be forced. Uh, I took a storytelling class at a comedy house and that was way out of my comfort zone. I had to do a five to seven minute personal story about myself and <laughs> perform it. It had to be fully memorized, it had to be a true story about you. And you had to stand up and they didn't tell me it was going to be a packed house. And <laughs> I almost chickened out. I almost didn't do it, but you know what? I sucked it up. And cause I'll get, I'll get really nervous in front of crowds. You think like you and me one-on-one -on -one, I'm like, I get really nervous uh, performing or anything like that, which just sounds kind of funny with my personality, but um, I did it. And I learned so much about storytelling I mean, it was an eight week course, but they broke down every little detail and how with your body language, the way you tell it, how to really come full circle on that personal story. And actually there were, there were some stories that were not comical. They were powerful, emotional, this makes yeah. you weak. I mean, it is, it's, it's a, that, that would be another recommendation is get out of your comfort zone. First of all, it was so much fun. The people I met, uh, it's great for public speaking and stuff too, if you're ever having to do that in your job. Uh, and then just for me, I just write stuff down. If I think it's funny, I'll, I'll write it down and then I'll kind of grow on it. And if it's something that I think it would be funny to share, I do. And so, and then just stick to authentically yourself. No one's going to think my, no one's going to be me. And I would never encourage, like, if I ever wanted to coach somebody in like humor marketing, I would break it down. Like, what do you, what do you think is funny? You know, what, what are some of the movies? Are you more dry humor? I mean, go to that and, um, you know, just, just flesh it out for you is what I would say. 
I love it. Humor marketing, get comfortable with uncomfortable, which is a theme we hear often in the CEO for life, right? Um, yes. Take the time. I love that. You, you mentioned take the time. Okay, so let's break that down. I have a couple things because we're, we're, boy, we're moving fast on time. Um, take the time. Wife, business owner, foster kids, involved in all their activities, taking these classes, startup business, take the time. How do you prioritize? Because there's only so much limited time. And so I talk a lot in the book about how to say no and how to set boundaries. How do you learn to what to say no to and how do you prioritize? What was what were some key learnings you have? I would say invest in things that are going to fill your soul personally. For me, always prioritizing my faith is one that focuses me. For, mm -hmm. for me, it's... Um, starting my day with, with gratefulness, gratitude, time in prayer, and putting my family as first as you can. I mean, the reality is not everything's going to be balanced perfectly all the time. And, it, and whoever tells you that is lying to you. I mean, it's not, it's not real life, yep. but I think that for me, lots of lists. Oh my goodness. Like you should see my, I've, sticky notes lists I've got to focus because I am a creative mind I really have to rein it in exercise okay. lots of water lots of lists and Jesus yep. <laughs> <laughs> there you go there you go the superfood right the superfood that's awesome uh, for me a hundred percent and that's kind of what has I know one of your questions was you know how did you come to your passion and purpose? And I think that's yeah. just the core and the heart is my faith. And that's what made us talk about taking risks. I mean, yeah. becoming a foster parent and adoption has been a yeah. big part of our journey. And also I feel like that part of my life, really taking a leap of faith with our adoption journey has helped me in my career because that was a mm. huge risk. That was such yeah. an unknown for me. Sure. And my husband and I, I was terrified. It took, it took me three years to get my head out of the sand and realize that the Lord was like, I'm not letting you not do this. This is your path. And uh, <laughs> I was terrified. My husband and I yeah. both were terrified. And I think that that has trickled into maybe my uh, bravery in sure. my business is yeah. our family dynamic and saying yes to things that you're scared. And so I think that's that right. that's, that's been a big part of how my career is going as well. No, it's super critical. I love that you pointed it out for us again, as a good reminder and that, you know, you have to have some sort of anchor or foundation because if you don't, if you're not building your CEO path, whether it's your life or your work, you're, you're going to shake at everything that comes along, just like you mentioned. And, um, and you have yes. to be brave and that bravery does turn into other things. I love how you shared that with us. Another thing I wanted to talk about, and as we kind of wrap through this, and I, I wanted to just because it's on my mind to ask you was, as you were going through this process, and um, I want to talk about imposter syndrome, yourself as well as others, right? Did you go through that process of people that love you saying, boy, Kimberly, I don't know if this is really the right thing for you to do. You know, they love you and they're looking out for you. Or, or did you run into some of those obstacles in terms of imposter syndrome, either in yourself or with others? I think most of the people surrounding me have always been super supportive as far as the crazy things that I've wanted to do. <laughs> um, I think the imposter syndrome, quite frankly, comes from myself. It's not anyone around me. I, and kind of to go back to what I spoke about earlier about, you know, t having a gap in my resume because I was at home with right. the kiddos. That right. is so hard, so hard sometimes for parents to have that. Well, yep. am I faking it? Am I good enough? Heck yeah, you're good mm -hmm. enough. You just have to, you know, there's might be a little fake it till you make it, but yeah. you will. If you keep putting yourself out there, you absolutely will. So I would say the imposter syndrome really comes from myself. I don't think I've necessarily, I mean, I've had people not get my sense of humor and because I can be such a, a weirdo, like I'm just, I just, I'm just goofy. 
And some people don't get it. And you know what? That's totally okay. But that's just not your tribe. And that's fine. Uh, But I think for me, the imposter syndrome really comes from myself and clinging to my faith and knowing that, you know, I'm a lot more than really my career and I'm going to make bold choices and just try my best to be my authentic self and learn and be humble and get out there. My downtime right now, all of my downtime is YouTube videos of wine education. You know, I'm on this obsession right now with, with aged Zinfandel. I mean, who does that? I mean, it's just, I want to know all the things I want to know you know, why different wine bottles are shaped the way they are. Why? Like, why does one have a high shoulder? Why are they like this? All these questions you have to get out there and learn. Like, don't, don't sit down and just think I'm going to eventually get there. You have to put in the work and try and step over that imposter syndrome when it, when it gets into your own head. So fortunately I haven't had a lot of people that are like, don't do that. Everyone's like, okay try it go do it and it so really i'm very again. grateful <laughs> yeah like somebody so many people say to me robert why like why why are why are you doing that and my answer is why not yeah why not to why not you know why not so yeah, I don't know I, how wise you know, that is, but wait, Kimberly, <laughs> way to put a bow on this episode. Why not? Right. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. Well, listen, you know, we talked about everything that we do. We matters, how it weaves together, you know, um, you know, taking ourselves too seriously. We talked about take the time. We talked about getting comfortable with uncomfortable. We talked about, you know, just how do you find yourself and how to get over the posture syndrome? I mean, you just walked us through all of it, Kimberly, and just uh, your story is awesome. And thank you for sharing it with us today. I appreciate it. Well, I was, when you reached out, I thought, how cool is that? I mean, it was, it's such a great opportunity. And I just really hope I encourage people to just really just be joyful, spread joy out there, go have some fun and work hard, love your craft. And, you know, don't take yourself too seriously and take some risks, you know, let people really know your personality. So, but thank you so much. This was such a blast. And, uh, you know, I hope I encourage some people today. Awesome. Well, listen, everyone who's watching and listening, I'm going to link uh, information on how to get in touch with Kimberly, either above or below. Um, like I say, in every episode, the guests that I go out and purposely try to connect us with are real people. She's a real person. If you DM her, she will get back to you. Um, you know, if any of this resonates with you, if you're trying to find your creative side, if you're trying to maybe look into wine sales, start your own business, foster adoption, I mean, you name it, Kimberly has shared with us her life today. And so connect with her. Do not just let this be just something you've listened to or watched. So bring it to life. I would love to hear from you. And I'm, you know, love to help anybody that needs that encouragement out there to just go for it. So. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for tuning into this episode of the CEO for Life Experience. And um, this was a really good one. Why not? I love it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you.